showing you how to make what we call rubby dubby, some people call it chum. It's basically a mixture of just fish, guts, blood, bone, anything you've got that stinks. Mix it with some, some bran flakes. This is my new secret weapon, fish, bone and blood. I think this off the wife. You basically put it in your vegetables to help them grow. But it's just basically made with blood, fish, bones and sand and stuff like that. I'm hoping the sand will sink, taking the scent down to the bottom. So these are the things you can need. Already I've chopped up some old fish. This is like a leftover carcass of a cod I caught a little while ago and I ate and it was lovely. I, mean, I kept the head and the tail and all its guts and I've chopped them up into bits and I've chucked them in a bucket. This is a herring I caught a few weeks ago. I froze it. Um, I was going to use it as bait but I've got plenty of bait for, for my fishing trip tomorrow so I'm going to chop this up. Just literally I'm just going to get it and I'm just going to cut it up into little tiny bits. I want all the blood and the bones to get in there. That's nothing fancy. The head is especially good because it's full of blood and stinky bits. You want to really crush it up, break the eyeballs, get it all in there. If you cut it up too small, it's going to fall out the gaps in the onion sack, which we're going to put it in at the end. So you don't want it all too little, but you do want some smaller bits. The tide will wash it away. So this is what you. This is the most important bit. You need fish, and you need your fish to stink. So you need to let it thaw out and sit in the sun for a little while. Next thing you're going to need is some sort of thing to hold it all together. So I'm going to use brown flakes. Some people use mashed potato. Um, there's all different things you can use. It doesn't really matter what you use. It's anything that's just going to sort of hold it all together in like a paste, but also dissolve as it goes in the water. This, as I said before, is my new secret weapon. This is going to be my first time trying it, so I hope you'll have some luck. And um, I'll, I'll make a separate video to show how I got on with it. Um, this is also quite important, this is pilchard oil. Any fish oil is good. I buy it in large containers like this cheap. Don't buy the proper fish bait stuff because it's really expensive. Any fish oil will do, I'm gonna chuck it in. You need some containers to put it in. So I'm gonna store it in, in containers like this. I've got lids, I've got this one, I can tighten up. And I'm gonna mix it in this big bucket. At the end of it, you need to put it in a sack or something to suspend it in the water. I use these onion sacks, but some people just use the wife's old tights, old socks. Anything that's going to hold it in but the water can get through and bits and pieces can just fall out. So it's, it's a really simple thing to make. We're literally just going to get the bits and we're going to put them into the bucket. So I've got my fish here which I've already chopped up as you saw a minute ago. And I'm literally just going to chuck it in. All in there. But I'm just literally just going to take some brown flakes. You need quite a lot of brown flakes. So I've used three quarters of this packet. This is a... how do we do it? This is a 500 gram packet and I've used three quarters of that. This is a 750 gram packet of fish, bone and blood. I'm chucking it all in. It's all going in there. Let's show you this up close. So as you can see, this is the, the fish, bone and blood, the, the gritty sandy stuff and the, and the brown flakes. I'm going to mix that all in. Now all we need to do is take our, our fish oil. I mean it's quite a liberal amount. You can see I'm pouring quite a lot in here. The fish oil will float and it will take the scent with it. And it will, this, the, the fish oil itself generally draws in kind of shark-like creatures. It's dogfish, rays, things like that. You do get other fish as well, but the, it draws in this kind of species. I'm actually gonna anchor this to the bottom. I don't normally do that. I'm gonna weigh it down to the bottom because I'm gonna be fishing for rays and I want them to smell this from the bottom. The reason we use Roby Dubby is I feel it increases your chances of catching a fish because the scent in the water draws in more fish, gets them into the area where you've got your hook and you've got a better chance. The next thing we do is just add a little bit of water. I'll be so right I've back. got like a couple of cups of water in here. I'll just tip in a bit at a time. A bit like anything when you mix things up, like cement or plaster. You, know, you don't just chuck it all in because then you wish you had, hadn't put so much in. And, I, and I'm just going in my hands. I mean, people want to use a spoon, you can if you're a bit grossed out by it. But I'm just literally getting in here and I'm just chucking in my hands, you know, mixing it up. And I'll show you inside. So what I want is just to end up like a bit of a paste. So as the brown flakes start to get wet and soggy, it'll all start pasting up. So we've left this out all day in the sun. Um, it's soaked up all the water and all the oil. It's starting to really stink now. I'm going to show it to my dog and you'll get an idea of how much it smells because he's like, oh yeah, give me some. <laughs> he's actually been a nick in a bit. So I came out a minute ago and the dog was actually eating some of this. So I'm hoping uh, it's not going to make him really ill. Anyway, so this is basically the last stage. What we're going to do is we're going to chuck it in sacks and I'm going to put it in a storage container so it's ready to go on the boat. So literally, there's no easy way of doing this. It always makes a mess and you always get covered in it. So I'm literally just going to chuck it in with my hands. 
because I've tried doing it delicate ways before, but you just got to accept you got to touch it. So I'm going to try and get two packets out of this. All right, so we're down at the slip now. We've got our boat ready to go. We're gonna just going to show you what we've made with a charm, and I'm going to sort of give you some ideas how we're going to tie it on. This is the charm that you saw me making earlier. I'm not going to pull right out of the bag because it'll be not. So this is our charm. It's compacted a little bit now. It's a bit hard to see, but when we're out, I'll keep it in the box. I'll get it out and chuck it straight over. So normally, what I would do. Is I'll just tie it onto a divot or something. I tie it on here, maybe tie it on a fud, and I let it float in the water. And every now and again, I just give it a little shake, and a little bit of particles will fall out into the water, and the oil will disperse, and hopefully uh, attract some fish. But we're going to be fishing right at the bottom today, and you know we're going to be looking for probably rays, maybe some cod, um, and those kind of species. So we're going to we're going to anchor it to the bottom, and um, I suppose there's two ways we could do this. We could either we could tie it on as normal here attach a weight just like your normal fishing weight and stick it on the bottom at the back but David here the cameraman he's had an idea why not tie it to the anchor itself so all we're considering doing is a few meters up from our anchor to our anchor imagine that we're going to anchor and we're thinking maybe if we tie it on sort of somewhere around about here so it's going to sit suspended in the water maybe just a few feet off the ground and still be moving around in the tide a little bit hopefully just dropping food on the floor and, and more importantly because the tide will be pulling us this way it'll be drifting it back towards where we're fishing so if we're up tiding or down tiding off the boat there's a good chance that this rubby dubby or chum whatever you want to call it is going to is going to slowly drift past our boat and and hopefully we're going to be in a kill zone throughout the whole fishing trip because this 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 bait, which is basically what it is, is just gonna slowly drift past us. So we're gonna head out now, we're gonna uh, jump in the boat. I wanna just show you the boat quickly before we go. So it's a 3.1 meter rib. There's only two of us going out on here. Um, we've got a slightly bigger boat that sometimes we use, but at the moment the rib is quite fun because we're only gonna be fishing locally. So we've got a 3.1 meter rib, it's a five glass hole with both sides. The seat doesn't ever get sat on, this is pretty much just our bait table. We've got a little 15 horsepower engine, and all our gear in there. And we're gonna be set for the whole day fishing on here. We're gonna be quite comfortable fishing out in the estuary. Um, and like I say, hopefully catch some rays. So, see you soon. sort of two or three hours now we've had the we've had the rubby dubby bag or chum bag tied to the anchor we've had quite a lot of whiting we've had a small pouting but no no real big fish we've been sort of really after rays today maybe a cod um so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the other chum bag in there we're gonna tie this one off the back the traditional method, method of just sort of hanging it off the back and letting it float so i've tied it onto this little rope which i've got attached to the boat and i'm literally just gonna hang this over the side of this and then every now and again you you probably can't see that well on the camera, but you can see like the particles just floating out the back. And every now and again, we give it a little shake so some more will come out. And, uh, and hopefully that's going to bring us in some more fish. Doggy. Two doggies. <laughs> That's a 
good one, mate. Let me help get it in a sec. You're right. Let me help pick it. Put the film in a bit before you come in. You're right. We were hoping to catch them on cod, but they just weren't there that day. But the rubby dubby bag or the chum bag, it seemed to do the trick. It did seem to work well. When we put the second one out, it really did make a big difference. We started catching a lot more fish again. So thanks for watching the video. We're going to be making some videos on tying rigs and tying knots. So please subscribe and um, hope to see you soon.